Father, we thank you tonight. I bless your name for every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, everyone here. I thank you for all our invitees. I thank you for those who have brought great, great problems before you. Tonight, touch their lives. Tonight, move their mountains away. Tonight, break every yoke. And let there be miracle for everyone in Jesus' name. Let there be confirmation in every life tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are blessed already. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. That sentence coming from the Lord Jesus Christ is a principle that God himself always acts on. Anyone who comes before him, no matter your background, no matter your problem, no matter your tears, no matter even your sin in the past, and no matter your failure in the past, as you come in the presence of the Lord, and you come with faith and with expectation, you will not be disappointed. It's a God of love. It's a God of mercy. And it's a God of power. And because of his love and mercy, he bases every blessing he gives you on the fact that you come, you believe, and what you are believing for will be done. According to your faith, be it done unto thee. Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. It says in verse 23, And Jesus said unto him, I remember Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if Jesus were to talk to you directly, physically tonight, this is what he will tell you. Remember again, no matter who you are, and no matter where you are coming from, and no matter the challenges you have in your life, if Jesus were to talk to you personally, physically, one to one, this is what he will tell you. Verse 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's what the Lord is telling you tonight. Your problems will soon vanish away. Your mountain will still soon move. And all those challenges of your life that you have been wondering, how will this be done? How will that be done? Tonight is the night it will be done. He says, if you can only believe, believe all things are possible to him that believes. I believe God tonight. In your life, all things are possible. In your family, all things are possible. Every challenge of your life, all things are possible. He will put laughter in your mouth. Joy in your heart. Look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. What load are you carrying? What pain are you having? What sickness do you have in your life? Tonight, God has come to you personally. And he has come to make all things possible in your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me. Be it unto me. Be it unto me according to thy word. 
and it's unto you tonight according to the word you are hearing in Jesus name tonight before we pray I want to talk to you on the great possibilities of faith in Christ the great possibilities of faith in Christ once you put your faith in Christ there are great possibilities that moment that time you put that faith in Christ you'll see all those mountains moving away all the walls of partition and the walls of disturbance in your life everything crumbling you will see Satan fleeing away from your life and every sickness you will see will just be dissolving and going away the moment you put your faith in Christ the great possibilities of faith in Christ there are three things we're talking about tonight number one asking asking you will ask Notes this, everything you ask the Lord tonight is done. Yeah. Number two, appropriating. Appropriating. That means after you ask, then you stretch out your hand. What you claim, you are going to have. Because you can appropriate. Number three, acting. Acting. You will not just, you know, if you are down there, and you are immobile, and you are stagnant, and you are paralyzed, and you are blind, and you are incapacitated, you will act out your faith. You ask, you appropriate, you act. And those three words will drive a miracle into your life. Number one, asking in prayer as a child asking in prayer as a child a child has just come into the world and he has not asked anything from the mother before and the mother ever said no and so she comes that little child comes with confidence and tonight as you ask forget about any failure in the past I prayed before forget about that I asked before, forget about that. I didn't get this before, forget about that. I was weak before, forget about that. Tonight is a new night. It's a new day. Asking in prayer as a child. Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence. Appropriating. Look at that. That is mine. Healing is mine tonight. Look at that. Strength is mine. Strength is mine tonight. Look at that. Provision is mine. Provision is mine tonight. Look at that. Miracle is mine. Miracle is mine tonight. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Appropriating the provision with confidence. Number three, acting like possessors and conquerors. Acting like possessors and conquerors. When you sing, because you sing after the message tonight, you will sing like I am a possessor. I am a conqueror. And when you walk, you walk with your shoulders up because tonight you are a possessor and a conqueror. And when, when you talk, you talk with confidence and assurance because tonight you are a possessor and a conqueror. I am a possessor. I said I'm a possessor. And I am a conqueror. You have conquered already in Jesus' name. Number one, asking in prayer as a child. Asking in prayer as a child. While the message is going on, you might remember what you need to ask. You write it down, judge it down. And then as we move on, there's something I didn't remember that before. Even though I've been waiting on the Lord from the morning, I remember now, jot that thing down. Everything you are asking tonight in prayer, the moment you open your mouth, the Lord will fill your mouth. In Matthew chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 7. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Praise the Lord, there's no doubt 
and praise the Lord, there's no unbelief. Praise the Lord, there is no uncertainty here. Ask, and it shall be given you. And it says, seek, and ye shall find. Seek, and ye shall find. You are finding it tonight. That thing you lost, you are finding tonight. It says, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The doors that were closed against you before, those doors are opened. My doors of opportunities are opened. I'll say it for yourself now. My doors of opportunities, they are open. And my doors of breakthrough, they are open tonight in Jesus' name. God said, for everyone that asketh receiveth, somebody there on my right hand, everyone, somebody in front of me here, everyone, somebody over there, everyone, yes, at the gallery, over there, everyone, and yes, those who are on the internet, you are online, and you are listening now, I rejoice with you, everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, you will not seek in vain. You will not search in vain. And uh, to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You know, you have been outside the house and you are coming back. You might be a little child, you can knock. You might be a boy, a girl, you can knock. Or you are coming to that house for the first time. But the person inside there loves you and is expecting you. You can knock. Everybody here tonight can knock. And when you knock at the door tonight, the door is opened unto you. Hey, look at verse, look at verse 9. For what man is there of you? If his son shall ask bread, will he give him a stone? What you are asking tonight is what you are going to get. The miracle you're asking for tonight is what you are going to get. The blessing you're asking for tonight is what you are going to get. Look at verse 10. Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? It will not give you something poisonous. What you get tonight will be a blessing upon your life. Verse 11. Verse 11. If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give, tell me, tell me, good things to them that do what? Ask him. Thank God. You are going to ask tonight and miracle in your life. Healing for the sick. Deliverance for the oppressed. Salvation for sinners. And blessings for everyone. Look at Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, anytime Jesus used those words, verily I say, it means this one is unchangeable. This one must be fulfilled. And he's telling you tonight, verily, verily. There's a verity in your life tonight. A certainty in your life tonight. All the, all the things, all the clouds are cleared away. Because tonight, the Lord is telling you, and he says, Verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. Why wouldn't you bind all those things disturbing your progress? Why will you not bind all those things infiltrating into your life? Why will you not bind all those enemies that are determined that they're going to ruin your life? And when you open your mouth tonight and you say, Enemy, I bind you, they are bound in heaven. All the hindrances, I stop you. They are stopped in heaven in Jesus' name. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What authority you have in your mouth tonight? What power you have in your mouth tonight? That everything you lose here on earth, thank God, heaven will support you. Heaven will back you up. And heaven will bind and loose that thing in Jesus' name. 
verse 19 again i say unto you that if two of you shall agree brother and sister if two of you shall agree a friend with another friend if two of you shall agree the pastor and the member if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching as touching as touching anything there's no limit to asking tonight it is anything and thank god your prayers are answered the two of you shall agree as touching anything that he shall ask 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 it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven i am blessed tonight i am blessed tonight your doors are open tonight and your prayers are answered tonight and all the failures of the past they are cleared away tonight in jesus name matthew chapter 21 matthew chapter 21 verse 19 and when he saw a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and search unto it and search unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away any tree standing in your way not bearing any fruit any tree standing in your way having leaves only and yet it's not putting anything into your life anything good is sapping your energy is sapping your money is sapping all the nutrients and yet there's no fruit tonight as you open your mouth and say dry up it is dried up verse 20 and when the disciples saw it you will see it the marvel saying how soon is the fig tree withered away jesus answered and said unto them verily i say unto you if ye have faith and doubt not if ye have faith and doubt not ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree but also if ye shall say to this mountain your time has come if ye shall say to this mountain it's talking about the mountain of problems mountain of sickness mountain of infirmity mountain of challenges mountain of impossibilities in your life if ye shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea it shall be done it shall be done you have a miracle already it shall be done and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer you see that it's, it's waiting for you heaven is waiting for you the lord is waiting for you all you need to do is ask all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. I will receive. I have received. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able unto him that is able the god we're serving tonight is he able able to save answer able to save able to heal able to deliver able to cleanse the leper able to raise the dead ah, you're not sure is our god able that challenge of your life tonight you see able to roll it away now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly 
above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us. Where is the power of God working tonight? I said, where is the power of God working tonight? And according to that power, he will go beyond your prayer. He will go beyond your expectation. Everything you are asking, he will do for you. And then he will do exceedingly above, abundantly above all that you ask or seek according to the power that works in you. If there's anything inside you there that is disturbing your life, the power will penetrate your life tonight and drive everything away in Jesus' name. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Let me just quickly tell you why it says world without end. There are some people that say that miracles have stopped happening. No miracles again, no healings again, no deliverance again, no answer to pray again. But it says God is still able. And even to the end of the world and beyond the end of the world, you will continue to answer prayers. Number one, asking in prayer as a child. Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence appropriating the provision ways confidence here we need to really understand God is expecting that you know already that as you open your mouth and you ask that he has answered and then there are many people after they are prayed they are sitting back some of them are still crying some of them are still mourning and the Lord is waiting for them it says, it's there, take it, it's there, it's yours. I pray you'll appropriate tonight. And let me give you the illustration here in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 29. Verse 29, it says, Luke chapter 15, verse 29, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid. Here is a child, here is a son, dutiful, here is a son, obedient, here is his son abiding in the house. Here is his son walking with the father, walking for the father. But he didn't know what he had. And he couldn't appropriate. He didn't take anything. He was living with complaint and with murmuring. He was living with sorrow. He said, I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And you never gave me a key that I might make merry with my friends. You never gave me. Look at verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is thine. All that I have is thine. He, he had everything. He possessed everything. All the Father and in the mind of the Father, in the understanding of the Father, everything belonged to him. But he was waiting. He never gave me a key. He never gave me anything. The Lord has given you everything. What you have to do is to stretch out your hand of faith and grab it and receive it. It is yours already. Mark chapter 7 appropriating the provision with confidence. Mark chapter 7, verse 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs. 
let the children first be filled. The woman was asking for deliverance for her daughter, release for her daughter. And Jesus said, it's the children's bread. Many of the children of Israel did not even know that. The Pharisees did not know that. The Sadducees did not know that. They didn't appropriate. It was theirs. In the mind of Christ, every one of the children of Israel should take healing like breakfast. They should take healing like the provision of their parents because it's the children's bread. Look at this woman. She appropriated it. She said, I'm not going away from here empty-handed. Somebody there, I am not going away from here empty-handed. After all, I'm a child of God. Somebody there, I am a child of God. And I must appropriate what belongs to me. Look at verse 28. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table each of the children's crumbs. He said, I'll take the crumbs. And when the crumbs are falling on the ground, I don't need permission from those who are sitting on the table to take the crumbs. I'll take the crumbs. And then he said unto her, For they say, Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. For they are saying, you know you're right. And you know that this is your provision. And that this belongs to you. And because you know that, and because you voice that out, go your way. The devil has no choice. He has to go out from your daughter. Your parents are delivered tonight. Appropriate. Take it because it is yours. It is mine. It is mine. First John chapter 3, verse 21. First John chapter 3, verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. I have confidence toward God. I have confidence toward God. You didn't come by accident. You came the right way. And you came to the right place. And the blessing of the Lord is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Anybody having confidence in God there tonight? The Lord confirm it in your life. Verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Whatsoever, we come with that confidence. We come with that trust. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Look at chapter 5, verse 14. Chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. And this is the confidence that you have in him tonight. That if we ask anything according to his will, tell me, he has said your prayer. He heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. I have the petitions I desired of him. That's the end in your heart when you are coming. And you said, I'm going because of this reason. The Lord is going to affirm it. And the Lord is going to confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 
21. In this verse, the verses I'm going to read now, I want to show you that your answer is already there. I didn't say your answer is on the way. I said your answer is already there. But you must stretch out your hand and appropriate it. I will get it. In uh, Genesis chapter 21, verse 15, and the water was spent, finished, in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shops. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice, tell me, and wept, and wept, and wept, because look at my child. There is no water. The child is dying of thirst. And so I turn my face away from that child, crying. Verse 18. The Lord talking to her now, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. I will make you a great nation. But look at verse 19. And God opened her eyes. And God opened her eyes. And God opened her eyes. If your eyes are not open, you'll be crying for nothing. If your eyes are not open, you'll be in despair, despondency. If your eyes are not open, you'll be so discouraged, you want to give up life. If your eyes are not open, you'll think this child will die. Your child will not die. Verse 19, and God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. That well of water was so near. That well of water was available and there was enough water inside that well to refresh the child and to keep the child alive. And she saw a well of water and she went and what? Did she wait for somebody to come and tell her what to do with the water? She appropriated it. She saw it. You see it tonight. You see the healing tonight. You see the deliverance tonight. You see the power tonight. And you see the provision tonight. And you don't have to wait for anybody. Now you can appropriate it and stretch forth your hand. You've got it tonight in Jesus' name. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad and God was for the lad and he grew and he dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Number one, asking in prayer as a child. Number two, appropriating the provision with confidence. Number three, acting like possessors and conquerors. Acting like possessors and conquerors. After you've asked, and then you appropriate, your action will change. Your disposition will change. Your attitude will change. There'll be no sorrow anymore once you appropriate. And there'll be no confusion anymore once you appropriate. And there'll be no depression anymore once you appropriate. There'll be no crying anymore once you appropriate acting like possessors and conquerors. Your action shows you have appropriated. I appropriate tonight. I take it tonight. I said I take it tonight. It is yours tonight in Jesus' name. For Samuel chapter 1. For Samuel chapter 1. 
verse 10 and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so and wept so because she was in need and because she was under a real pressure and a great demand and because she was not happy in her family she didn't have the fruit of the womb and so she wept so and then in verse 13 now Anna she speak in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard therefore Eli thought she had been drunken and Eli said unto her how long wilt thou be drunken put away thy wine up from thee and Anna answered and said no my lord I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but I poured out my soul before the Lord count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto because of the problem she had complaint because of the problem she had sorrow because of the problem she had grief verse 17 then Eli answered and said go in peace anybody there go in peace go with your answer go with your miracle go with the supernatural power of God go in peace the God of Israel grants thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him verse 18 verse 18 look at the action of a possessor the action of a conqueror she was crying before she was in bitterness before and she was in grief and sorrow before but now Eli said her prayers were answered and I say your prayers are answered verse 18 and she said let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight so the woman went her way she stopped praying because now the answer has come and did eat she wouldn't eat before but now this is action this is the action of faith I believe I wasn't eating because I was sorrowful I wasn't eating because I was in grief I wasn't eating because I was discouraged but now my prayers are answered I said my prayers are answered she did eat and her countenance was no more sad that's the action of a possessor the action of a possessor tonight you are a possessor so your action will be your cheer up your action will be your sing your action will be you are joyful your action will be you are happy it is done I said it is done in your life I said it is done and because of that there's no more sorrow because of that there's no more weeping because of that there's no more complaint it is done second Kings I'm reading here from the chapter 4 second Kings chapter 4 Second Kings chapter 4 acting like a possessor acting like a conqueror in second Kings chapter 4 verse 19 and he said unto his father my head my head and he said to a lad carry him to his mother and when he had taken him 
had brought him to his mother. He sat on her knees till noon and then, tell me, she knew this cannot be. This cannot be. This is my bundle of joy. My bundle of joy will not die. This has been my hope. My hope will not die. And this has been the great miracle, the miracle of a great long-awaited testimony. My miracle will not die. My testimony will not die. Look at verse, uh, verse 21. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the doors upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said send me I pray thee one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again was there sorrow in her voice did the husband discover that something terrible terrific has happened did the husband say about the child I sent to you what happened to him did the husband say that because the woman was talking with the voice of a possessor. Somebody there, my gift is alive. And then, verse 23, and he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, and she said, that's the possessor, a possessor. The possessor will act will talk like a real possessor it shall be well then she saddled an ass and said to her servant drive and go for slack not thy riding for me except i bid thee so she went and came to the man of god to mount camel and it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold yonder that Shunammite, run now, I pray thee to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thine husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, and she answered, you must speak the language of a possessor. The child was still there and nothing had happened to the child. The child appeared to be dead yet, but you know, your child cannot die. Your family cannot perish. And your provision will not die. So she said, it is well. Somebody there shout it out. It is well. Verse 36. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was coming unto him, he said, Take up thy child. Take up thy child. That situation of death was a temporary situation. Now, life has come. Resurrection life has come. Miracle life has come. That situation you brought here tonight, it was a temporary thing. Now, life has come to you. Miracle has come to you. Power has come to you. In my life, it is well any possessor there i said in your life it is well obadiah chapter one obadiah chapter one i'm reading from verse 17 obadiah chapter one verse 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance that's where you are tonight and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess and the people of God shall possess 
their possession. You have it tonight already. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He's our savior. Through him, we're more than conquerors. He's our healer. Through him, we're more than conquerors. He is our deliverer. Through him, we're more than conquerors. Possessors, are they here tonight? Possessors, are they there tonight? Conquerors, are they there tonight? Stand up and put action to what you possess. Put action to what you conquer. You're a conqueror tonight. You're a possessor tonight. Let there be action of conquering. Action of possessing. Number one, ask. Number two, appropriate. Number three, act. Act it out. Every blessing you're asking for tonight, every miracle you're asking for tonight, ask, start by asking. Start by asking. Start by asking. Are you sick? Ask. Are you tormented? Ask. Are you poor? Ask. Are you jobless? Ask. Are you trodden down? Ask. Are you suffering? Ask. Whatever it is you need, ask tonight. Ask tonight. And ask as a child. Not expecting disappointment. Not expecting no. Not expecting failure. You ask the Heavenly Father as a child. Are you sure it will be done? Mountains to move away? Ask. Yokes to be broken? Ask. Deliverance to be given unto you? Ask. Provision from heaven? Ask. Miracle? Ask. Whatever the need may be, ask. Tonight is the night of asking and receiving. Asking as a child. Asking as a child. No disappointment. No refusal. Ask him, ask him, ask him. And you ask as a child. And remember that your God is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Ask him, ask him. Tonight is the night of asking and receiving. After asking, no more crying. After asking, no more complaining. After asking, no more sorrow. After asking, no more dejection. After asking, no more doubt. After asking, no more unbelief. Ask. This is your chance. Ask, this is your chance. It's yours. Whatsoever, 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 it's yours. Now appropriate, appropriate. You remember Hagar? She was crying, and the Lord opened her eyes. And the well of water was there. And your miracle, like an inexhaustible well, is there. Appropriate. Go there. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. It's yours. Appropriate. Appropriate. You see that woman? It's not try to give the children's bread to dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Even the dogs will take 
the crumbs under the table. It's not even asking for permission to take that. Already is crumbs under the table. Appropriate. All that I have is yours. Appropriate. It's me yours all the time. Healing, yours all the time. Deliverance, yours all the time. Miracle, yours all the time. Anointing that breaks the yoke, yours all the time. Ask, appropriate. Now act it out. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Act it out. Move like a new person. Talk like a possessor. Stand like a conqueror. No, it is done. Act like a possessor. Act like a conqueror. It's done. It's done. It's done. No more complaints. It's done. No more sorrow. It's done. No more stabbing yourself. I cannot eat. I cannot eat because of the grief and the sorrow. It's done, Chero. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. Rejoice like a conqueror. You've got it. Smile like a possessor. You've got it. Testify like a possessor, like a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. I have received. I am a possessor. I am a conqueror. I will talk like a conqueror. I will act like a conqueror. I will smile like a conqueror. I will sing like a conqueror. I got it. I got it. I got it. What is she? What is he there? You got it in Jesus' name. Ask, appropriate, act. Your mountains are gone. Keep up those signs. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you tonight for the assurance you have given us. That every prayer has been answered in Jesus' name. Wipe the tears of your people away. Take their sorrow away. Take their griefs away. And every oppression of the devil I command, come out in Jesus' name. And all the mountain of problems that they have presented before you. And they have asked you to remove, Lord a confirmation in every every life tonight in jesus name mountains get out in jesus name attacks affliction get out in jesus name impossibilities be possible in jesus name lord i pray every miracle that is needed now from all the people asking you Whatever the miracle may be, do it for every one of them in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. If you're lame, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Hunch back, vanish away in Jesus' name. You are concerned for a boy, concerned for a girl, concerned for a son. Concerned for a daughter, Lord, I pray you answer their prayers. All those concerns, fulfill them in Jesus' name. They have asked, they have sought, 
they have not opened the door for everyone in Jesus' name. Provision, abundance for the jobless, provide for everyone. Lord, I pray there is a verity, a certainty, an assurance in every life tonight. Every prayer has been answered. Every yoke has been broken. Put smile upon every face. Laughter in every mouth. Miracle for everyone. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.